Major disasters, such as hurricanes and earthquakes, are likely to have cascading impacts that can render a community helpless. If infrastructure collapses, services become unavailable, and basic needs go unmet. Preparedness activities for these disasters include assessing the hazard and its potential impacts. These risk assessments include examining the likelihood of an incident, the vulnerabilities of the community, the potential consequences, and how to mitigate them. Imagine that a freight train carrying hazardous materials derails near a populated area. A complex disaster of this nature, which has the potential to impact well beyond the crash site, will require the coordination of multiple agencies. The closure of the track may delay passenger and supply movement, and toxic substances might threaten the health and safety of nearby communities and the environment. It is common for disaster planning to take into consideration external hazards that might threaten a community. But in many incidents, there are also internal risks that may not have been considered in traditional preparedness planning. These risks are created by the way in which an organization operates and by the decisions that are made by its personnel. These are known as strategic risks. Strategic risks are not easy to identify and they're difficult to mitigate. They require internal risk assessments that involve scrutiny of organizational policies and behavior, as well as an acknowledgement that mistakes may have been made, which can be a difficult process. Even when identifying problems, strategies for risk reduction may not be apparent. But by understanding some of the underlying causes of these risks, it may become easier for planners and decision makers to address them. What are the causes for strategic risk? First, the human factor. How we think is influenced by what we've experienced in the past. We apply what we already know to new situations. Our expectations influence our choices and can prevent us from understanding the unique characteristics of a particular incident. For example, if we had experience with a passenger train derailing in the past, we might try to apply what we learned from that disaster. This might in turn activate a plan that doesn't take into consideration the particular challenges of the current freight train situation. In order to address the human factor, leaders and decision makers should remember the following. Don't just plan for what you know. Keep in mind that each incident can bring new challenges. Think outside of the box for possible solutions. Don't get attached to the first idea that comes into your head. Assign someone the job of questioning the proposed approach and challenge them to identify possible sources of failure. The second cause for strategic risk is organizational factors. The ways that our organizations are structured, managed, and interact with others can pose limitations and obstacles, whether the organization is public or private, small or large. These limitations can affect the preparedness of the organization. In a disaster like the freight train example, multiple agencies would respond. But if those agencies have not shared their disaster procedures, that lack of communication could result in conflicting operations and the possible endangerment of agency personnel or even the public. To overcome organizational factors, leaders should talk openly about vulnerabilities and plans, both within the organization and with other organizations. They must learn from past mistakes and use what they've learned to make improvements. Decision makers need to regularly examine the existing state of the organization and challenge the present status of preparedness. The third cause is the complex society in which we operate. Our society relies more and more on complex interconnected systems. When one part fails, there are likely to be impacts on other systems. This can be hard to predict and hard to prepare for. For example, the discontinued use of the train tracks because of the train derailment would cause commuting challenges for the community and would also negatively impact supply deliveries to important industries. To reduce these vulnerabilities, decision makers must remember to do the following. Resist oversimplification of the issues and allow for full understanding of the complex nature of systems, problems, and solutions. Ensure that plans are concrete, address critical impacts, and consider all related sectors and organizations. Prepare for multiple system failures and look for ways to restore services quickly. When it comes to disaster preparedness, strategic risks are everywhere and can contribute to the escalation of a disaster into a catastrophe. Decision makers must take a comprehensive approach to risk management 
by regularly reviewing plans, evaluating established processes, and thinking creatively about improvements. By assessing strategic risks within your organization, as well as the risks posed by outside threats, you can ensure that your organization will be better prepared to handle the consequences of a disaster of any size.